can it appears to have been an automatic weapon i don't know that we've seen that before i mean we we've seen semi-automatic weapons that often get characterized mischaracterized in the media as automatic weapons but this was clearly from the clip he was shooting a machine gun or at least a weapon that had been modified to fire like a machine gun yeah and the police are reporting there were multiple weapons 9 10 a.m superstation the voice of detroit Mom knows that every mom needs a little rehab. That's fun to say. All this week, you can win a Napa trip for you and your three besties. Relax at the Meritage Resort, indulge at Spa Terra, and get $1,000 spending money. I knew you were looking out for me! You'll also be entered to win $500 daily. Watch for the mom word of the day. Text it to 34490 or go to momweekdays.com to enter. You shave your legs? I'm not an animal. It's the every mom needs a little rehab sweepstakes. Mom at 7 p.m. on WADL Detroit. Every weeknight at 9 p.m. is something new and something fresh. This is Todd Corser, and I want you to check out my show. Listen in and call every week as we explore government and hot topics. Tune in, raw and uncut. This is attorney Michael Schwartz at 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, and you can hear me every Tuesday night starting at 9 p.m. Hello, Detroit. This is attorney Crystal Crittenden, and please tune in to my new show, The Truth Matters, on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. Hello, everyone. I'm Charlene Mitchell, your host of Mind Your Business. Listen to my show live every Thursday from 9 to 11 p.m. I'm Reverend Maya Walisa Reynolds inviting you to listen to Mama Maya Will Speaks Friday evenings from 9 until 11 p.m. Discussing education, motivation, and inspiration on Superstation 9, 10 a.m. Different names, different voices, but the same energy. 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the voice of Detroit. 10 a.m. Superstation gives you the flip side, the real side. This is our side. Three, Three two, one. one. You're listening to 910 a.m. Superstation, Detroit's only urban talk radio station. It's the Wayne Bailey Show. Good morning, Detroit. This is Wayne Bradley on the Wayne Bradley Show here on 9, 10 a.m., your superstation. Up early and at it. Hope everyone's having a good morning, getting ready for work. Uh, we are on another we're day two of the Wayne Bradley Show on The Daily Show. And uh, we're still in a position where we're going to sit here and talk about uh, gun control. We're going to talk a little bit about what Rex Tillerson did, uh, his press conference yesterday. We're going to talk about some more about Puerto Rico. Uh, and we're going to talk again. We're going to talk more about these supposed gun laws and what would have happened if we would have had those gun laws. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, the beleaguered Secretary of State. Uh, yesterday, he had to do something that he rarely does, which is make a public appearance. He had to uh, talk about the rumors that NBC had put out about that he had called the president a name and had threatened to step down and you know this story has kind of persisted for a while and i think that uh again the media who's looking at any kind of angle they can to discredit and dismantle the trump administration reported on something that again rex tillerson felt that he had to give a press conference so let's if we have that clip we're going to give we're going to go and listen a little bit to what rex tillerson had to say not yet okay we can wait a minute uh, we're going to talk a little you know let him uh explain it himself because again the media is taking a, a narrative and a story and running with it. Um, they would love to, you know, sow the seeds of discourse in the Trump administration. And Rex Tillerson, uh, he he had to answer to that because again, uh, this administration has had some, you know, had some growing pains. But at the same time, they've been laser light focused on the mission at, at hand. Um, there's been, you know, they like to talk about the different firings. Uh, last week, he on last Friday, he actually. Uh, had Tom Price, you know, let go because of all his use of private planes, which I think, again, President Trump 
has made it clear that he wants to put the people first, the American people, the taxpayer, and that includes against again with people in his own administration. If they're not going to do things the way uh, they should do it, the way that uh, they he he sets high expectations not just for himself but everyone that surrounds him. So I think that um, sometimes that that's going to be a tough mantle. Uh, he's not afraid to criticize his own cabinet and people around him, which again is a, a business model that he's followed since he's you know had any kind of business. Uh, and so he, he Rex Tillerson had to speak up yesterday. He decided to uh, give a press conference where he addressed all these different rumors of him stepping down. And I think that, again, it's, it's got to be frustrating because the administration wants to focus on the task at hand, and they keep having to deal with all these sidebar conversations and things that are, are you know, they don't have to do exactly with this administration. So I think it was very telling that, Rex Tillerson came out publicly yesterday in support of the president. Uh, there, like I said, the 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 level of the what he called pettiness is just is ridiculous. There, anything they can to make the Donald Trump presidency look bad. So, uh, give us a call. I want to I want to talk to anyone that thinks that the media is picking on uh, on the Trump administration. Do you think they're getting a fair shake when it comes to? Uh, you know, dealing with the media because to me it just it doesn't seem that way. It seems that if there's any opportunity uh, to spread bad information on on the part of a lot of the media, they're willing to do it without you know a lot of unnamed sources, a lot of different things of that nature. So I just you know I haven't seen it. You know, Rex Tillerson is an experienced CEO, and there might be some le- you know different levels of frustration that he has. Uh, dealing with government. I think that a lot of people who come out the private sector uh, would have that same experience because there's such a level of bureaucracy and things move at what I would consider a snail's pace in government. So there might be some frustration on that end, but it's not, you know, I don't think that uh, directing it all at the president is what what Rex Tillerson is doing. And And I think it's shameful the way that, again, some of the media and the fact that he had to come out yesterday and uh, give a press conference about all this. So we'll, we're going to we're going to uh, go to that interview in a, in a brief minute here. So you know you can listen to actually what Rex Tillerson had to say because again he had to address it um, in a way that he doesn't like. I said, he does not deal with the media too often. So it's going to be an interesting interesting press conference, and it's going to be interesting moving forward how they monitor uh, Rex Tillerson. I mean, a lot of these guys, like he said, he serves at the um, at the will of the president, and if the president wants, and the president also said that he had still had 100% confidence in Rex Tillerson, and I don't see why he wouldn't. Uh, this man was Exxon Mobil CEO. Uh, he he had the international experience, and maybe he wasn't dealing with directly with uh, diplomatic relations, but he understands these people and has these kind of relationships. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to dis- you know. Looks like we already have a caller at 5 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Michael, I appreciate you calling in this morning. Um, let's take Michael's call. Michael. Hey, no problem. I'm on my way uh, in from work. And uh, the question you ask is, is Trump being treated unfairly? A uh, media research um, council said that there's been more negative reporting on Trump first eight months than the last two years of the Obama administration. So partly the media is picking on him because of his brash, bombastic style. But partly, and as a person who voted for him, I have to be honest, he sets a lot of unforced errors as well, though. I mean, just recently, he threw relief supplies to people in Puerto Rico. You mm-hmm. don't do that. I mean, you don't, you just, is this something that should go off in his head and say, is, is this a good idea to throw it out like I'm a game show host, like I'm throwing out t shirts at a pissing game? Or <laughs> do I have a little more humility and allow somebody else to get the, uh, the good to them? So he has, unfortunately, because of his unapologetic, brash, and sometimes petty nature, he has a lot of unforced errors. So if he could clean up mm. his unforced errors, then we could really say that the media is really picking on him. But because he has so many errors of his own, it's kind of hard sometimes to discern between 
what is a legitimate error on, of, that he made, for example, with the whole Rex Tillerson. Tillerson is simply saying we have diplomatic channels with North Korea. And what does Trump come out and say? No, we don't. I mean, <laughs> he, said, he, can't do he, ba- that. he basically you said he was saying? wasting his time. And um, now, to me, those are those are the challenges that you're going to have working with. Uh, that, you know, with the administration and maybe, again, Trump has a different vision of what diplomatic relations look like. But, yeah, he did. Soon as Rex Tillerson landed on the plane, that's what he said, that he was wasting his time. Now, maybe in Trump's mind as a negotiator, he feels like he's pushing the envelope uh, by talking that way. I, you know, with the whole paper towel thing in Puerto Rico, um, considering he's down there trying to, you know, deliver a message, and be helpful to the people down there. I, don't, I think of all the things he's done, that's probably the least egregious. Uh, yes, we could probably say he shouldn't have thrown it out there, but at the end of the day, uh, the people weren't mad at him. They weren't like they threw it back at him or something. And I think that, you know, I think that we have to kind of, you know, again, we're we're so quick to to jump on President Trump for what we deem is not uh, presidential or compared to someone else before. And I think that that he's already said he wasn't going to be like any other president before. So. Um, what do you, what do you, do you think that that was just that critical of a, a error in judgment to do that, Michael? Well, what I'm saying is, is that he, he, he's right to have taken on the media based off of the leaked emails, the mainstream media, as we knew was in the tank for the democratic party. Right. So he's right to do that. But what I'm saying is, and you're right, it's very minor what he did as far as throwing the paper towel, but I'm saying like Charlottesville. He was right to say that the Antifa communism has killed more people worldwide than Nazism did. But all he had to do was just condemn the Nazis. It's easy. Right. Nobody no. is going to be, be upset at you if you give an unconditional condemnation of the Nazis and then work in that stuff later. That's what I mean when I say he has unforced errors. We know the media is out to get him. I understand that. Right. But he has given them... He's giving them breadcrumbs to eat off of, too. So this is not all made-up problems from the media. Some of it is his own brass style is giving them a little fuel so when they do their dirt, it seems like it's a little bit legitimate because he gave them just enough for a rational person to think on and say, well, I don't know. Trump did do this legitimately. And it kind of gives them a little fodder for the illegitimate stuff they do. And that's what I'm saying. I still am glad he's president over Hillary Clinton, but I still think there's a lot of growth for him to tighten up the unforced errors to make him a, a, a better president. Well, that's that's a fair evaluation, Michael, and uh, I appreciate you uh, calling in and giving that evaluation. Uh, I, I think that uh, over time that he's he's still you know tightening that up, and I do believe that he'll get better over time with that. He's a smart man and a good businessman. He'll figure he's going to figure it out. But thank you, uh, Michael for calling in today, okay? I appreciate that and being up this early, but you say you're getting off work, so I appreciate you calling in. All right. Well, we're going to go to the uh, – we're going to go to and listen to some of this Rex Tillerson press conference because, again, he felt that he had to address it. So let you listen in to what Rex Tillerson had to say about this, this situation. My commitment to the success of our president and our country is as strong as it was the day I accepted his offer to serve as Secretary of State. President Trump's America First agenda has given voice to millions who felt completely abandoned by the political status quo and who felt their interests came second to those of other countries. President Trump's foreign policy goals break the mold of what people traditionally think is achievable on behalf of our country. We're finding new ways to govern that deliver new victories. Our job is now to achieve results on behalf of America, and we are doing that. We've created international unity around our peaceful pressure campaign against North Korea, including influencing China to exert unprecedented economic influence on North Korea. At the Riyadh summit, the president rallied Muslim-majority nations to assume new responsibilities for stopping terrorism. NATO members are now contributing more to shared security. And our approach to South Asia and specifically Afghanistan means building upon our relationships with India and Pakistan to stamp out terrorism and support the Afghan government in providing security for their own people. 
and ISIS's fraudulent caliphate in Iraq and Syria is on the brink of being completely extinguished thanks to an aggressive new strategy led by the President. What we have accomplished, we have done as a team. Similarly, Secretary Mnuchin has levied economic sanctions on North Korea and related entities. Countries must increasingly decide whether they will do business with North Korea or with the community of peace-loving nations. Ambassador Haley has spearheaded and achieved enormous success passing the toughest UN sanctions to date on North Korea. General Mattis and I communicate virtually every day, and we agree that there must be the highest level of coordination between our diplomatic efforts and our military efforts. You can't have a stronger partner than a Secretary of Defense who embraces diplomacy. And I hope he feels he has the partner he needs at the State Department. And this is just the beginning of the list of partners and friends across the government who are all working for the American people. There is much to be done, and we're just getting started. To address a few specifics that have been erroneously reported this morning, the Vice President has never had to persuade me to remain as Secretary of State because I have never considered leaving this post. I value the friendship and the counsel of the Vice President, and I admire his leadership within President Trump's administration to address the many important agendas of President Trump, both from a foreign policy perspective and a dip diplomatic, a, uh, I'm sorry, a domestic objective. Let me tell you what I've learned about this president, whom I did not know before taking this office. He loved his country. He puts Americans and America first. He's smart. He demands results wherever he goes, and he holds those around him accountable for whether they've done the job he's asked them to do. Accountability is one of the bedrock values the President and I share. While I'm new to Washington, I have learned that there are some who try to sow dissension to advance their own agenda by tearing others apart in an effort to undermine President Trump's own agenda. I do not, and I will not operate that way. And the same applies to everyone on my team here at the State Department. When I wake up in the morning, my first thoughts are about the safety of our citizens at home and abroad. There's no more important responsibility I carry with me than ensuring that Americans are safe. Providing for the security of the United States must be the number one goal of our American foreign policy. President Trump and his administration will keep moving forward as one team with one mission doing great things for the United States of America to make America great again. Thank you. Is that the only thing that you consider to be erroneous in that article? I think it's the most important element of the article is to reaffirm my commitment to this role that President Trump's asked me to serve and to dispel with this notion well, there, that I There you have it. I mean, to me, Rex Tillerson, and it's unfortunate, again, that the Secretary of State has to have a press conference to address what he can cons- what he called erroneous and petty uh, reporting. And I think that again, this incident that they're talking about happened in July. Here it is October and they're now reporting on it just again, to make a headline. Uh, and again, during all the things that are happening right now, we have the tragedy in Las Vegas. We have the hurricanes in Puerto Rico uh, that the, Secretary of State would have to come in and and co-sign this and make this statement now. Again, it shows you the level of uh, that the media is going at. So they have to address it. I mean, to me, that is the bigger the bigger challenge is going to be uh, how do they deal with the media moving forward? Uh, they've continued to um, attack. They continue to make up stories that, to me, just are you know like like Rex Tillerson said are erroneous. They won't tell you who these sources are. They can give you all these details, but won't give you any of these sources. And again, I, I understand that they want to protect their sources, but have some integrity. And these people that are leaking stuff from the inside are just as bad because uh, maybe they don't get the attention they need, and they just feel like this is the only way to uh, exert some revenge or just to be to me be messy and gossipy on certain situ- situations. So. Uh, we're going to talk about that. 
uh, last night. The Pistons came into their new arena here in Detroit. I, I, I was happy to be downtown and saw a lot of folks coming from there. So maybe if anyone can call in and talk about the new arena, I'd love to. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we're gonna tomorrow. We're gonna have some folks coming on to talk about some of the local events that they got going on and uh, this weekend and upcoming events. I want people to know that uh, the Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly will be in. Uh, Detroit later today. He's going to be at Second Ebenezer Church at 6 p.m. So if anyone's interested in having going to this town hall forum with the Lieutenant Governor, uh, that'll be today at Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit. Uh, and like I said, the Lieutenant Governor will be there to answer questions from the people in the community. So uh, I was hoping that I could have had him call in today and maybe talk a little bit about it. But I'm letting folks know just, you know, if you're interested in talking to some of your elected officials, which I think that more people in our community need to do. We have to have that desire, that interest uh, to take advantage of when you do have elected officials in your in your community to go and talk to them, address the things that are important to you, ask ask questions that you think that need to be answered. Uh, Brian Kelly is one of the few elected officials that he's not looking for a scripted town hall. He's looking for people legitimately from the community to come in and talk with him. So uh, I definitely think that that's something if you're in the area you might want to check out. Uh, give us a call at 313-209-9000, 313-209-9000. And we're going to uh, we're gonna also talk a little bit more about this, this gun rights issue. Um, as more information comes out about this, this shooter, um, and, you know, I'm not a, really a big conspiracy theorist, but some of it just doesn't add up. Uh, this, this man had all the finances, the security that he had, uh, he— and his girlfriend, I believe, they, she arrived back in town yesterday uh, as a person of interest, not necessarily a suspect, but a person of interest. And, uh, you know, I think we just have to do more. We have to dig deeper on this one and really see where the disconnect was, what happened. Uh, is this just a, simply a situation of finances? Did he lose a lot of money and snap that way? Was it a personal situation? Because... To me, as I continue to listen to people making all these great suggestions, and I say great sarcastically, but all these suggestions about how they need to change gun laws, and, I, you know, I was on here with Spud the other day, and I think we talked about it briefly yesterday. I just don't see what laws you could have made to prevent this man in particular uh, from preventing what he was going to do. If he had no red flags, people will say that, Oh, he bought more than 10 guns. That's a red flag. And I just, you know, people are gun enthusiasts. Uh, this is this is part of, you know, a part of America, and a lot of people like guns. And I don't think that, you know, the, the realistically trying to, you know, make laws that are going to make it harder for, you know, just for people to purchase guns and protect themselves is the, bre- the best solution for what we call a, just a terrible tragedy. Uh, a lot of Democrats refuse to let a tragedy go to waste, and so they they're going to keep pushing this narrative that uh, something something drastic has to be done. When well, this is one person, you know you you know what can we do as a law that would have made it easier uh, to prevent this situ- situation? And and in this scenario in particular, and as with most most of these cases, I don't see where the government. Uh, could have created an environment or an atmosphere that this man still couldn't have done what he, you know, did. He could have gone and had, he, I'm sure he had plenty of um, background checks every time he purchased guns and things of that nature, but he didn't have a criminal record. He never exhibited anything, no domestic violence or anything like that. So what would have stopped him? Is it just the fact that he had such a large quantity of guns? Well, again, some people have gun display cases in their homes. Some people uh, you know, like to show them off when people come over. It's an interesting conversation starter. I wouldn't mind having a nice gun display when my daughter starts dating. I'd love for some guys to come by the house and I can show them all my beautiful uh, guns and say, the, the, this is all me, son. These are the things that matter to me. So uh, everyone that is into guns is not, you know, apt to doing something criminal with it. And I think that uh, that is the problem I have with these situations. You take the very worst case scenarios of of situations that like to happen this week, and then try to legislate a law that's supposed to work for everybody. When ninety nine percent of gun owners are responsible gun owners that don't do things like this, and so how do you you know why do you make it tougher for them? Uh, 
criminals and people that are planning to break the law and people that are plotting to kill people. For some reason, I just don't think that they're going to care that much about uh, these laws. They just won't. I mean, (laughs) there was a city councilwoman from Detroit, I believe it is. Her suggestion was banning people, banning guns from hotel rooms that are uh, open to the public, meaning like if you're standing in a, in a certain direction, that's got to be the most ridiculous idea that I've ever heard of. Uh, how do, you know? Again, how do you pl- plan that out? So, okay, the guy's going to turn around and say, well, I'm not staying on this side of the building, so maybe I, maybe I should be able to keep my gun. I mean, it just... <laughs> I feel bad for sometimes when I hear, and these are this is an elected official in Detroit. I'm gonna see if I can find that information because I just really could not believe that an elected official suggested that we should just ban rifles in hotel rooms facing public spaces. That was that was the city councilwoman's suggestion: ban guns in areas that are facing public ho- hotel rooms facing public spaces. So, you know, that that would solve the problem. That would have did it. Let's just ban rifles in hotel rooms facing public places, public spaces. That's that would have solved the problem. Yeah, like we can all that's like predicting the future saying hey, we know this is going to happen and like again, how often do gunmen go stay in the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel uh with, you know, with 20 guns and then start shooting out the window? I mean, I just you can't legislate for those kind of scenarios, in my opinion. Uh, there's just no way you can predict it. And there's, again, if the person is, is this hell-bent on destruction, no law is going to change that. People need to recognize that. I know it tugs on your emotions. I know when we see these tragedies, the first thing we want to say is, well, what can we do to change this? we we'll make sure it never happens again. And there's nothing you can really do to guarantee that it's never going to happen again. Uh, you go to Chicago, and I, you know, I hate beating a dead horse on that, but you go to places like Chicago where they have the tough gun laws, and guess what? The only people that can't get their hands on guns are the law-abiding citizens, the people that are actually following the laws and allowing for these laws to make it more difficult for them to uh, to own a gun. And so, again, this councilwoman, Janae Ayers, uh, s- says she's extor- exploring the potential uh, bringing forth legislation that was prompted by this Las Vegas shooting. Now, I know the police chief of Detroit would, would have an issue with that, and I'd love to talk to him about this and what his scenarios are on how do you stop a you know a bad guy with a gun. And I guarantee he'll probably tell you that the only way you can stop a bad guy with a gun is most likely a good guy with a gun. And so, you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's not the solution, more guns. Well, how, you're not going to talk a man out of – you know, after he's already committed these crimes, <clears throat> he com- he killed himself. There was no talking. There was no laws or no legislation that was going to get him to to change what he was doing. So, you know, that to me, that's just preposterous that we think that we can somehow uh, create some laws. And, and I'm sure Janae Ayers, her heart is in the right place uh, by wanting to provide a safe environment for Detroiters. Uh, but. This kind of legislation is almost it's almost comical. She says she's going to begin a fact-finding stage on how council could legally move forward to restrict and or secure rifles and semi-automatic, semi-automatic weapons on hotel premises. Again, most guys don't. I'm sure this gentleman, I'm almost sure that he must have assembled most of these weapons in his hotel room. He probably didn't walk in with a big rifle case, you know, that it looked like he had you know, machine, you know, uh, automatic, semi-automatic weapons or altered weapons or rifles. He might have assembled these things. And, again, now maybe the hotel that that they use discretion because, again, in, in Nevada the gun rules are a lot different and they're a lot more wide open out there. So maybe in, Cal- in Nevada it's not a big deal to see somebody walking in with uh, bags that might have, you know, some firearms in them because, uh, the, you know, there's deserts, and people like to go out to those shooting ranges out there. I mean, there's ranges out there where you can shoot off all kind of, um, you know, weapons. I've heard you can even let off a bazooka almost into the into the canyons type thing. So, I mean, there is all kind of, uh, you know, it's a little bit different in, in Nevada in terms of gun rights, and I'm okay with that. 
Uh, they were talking about expanding universal background checks. And, you know, to me, I'm not totally against that, but I think if I have to have a more expanded uh, background check, then I think it should be reciprocity in all the states, uh, that I should be able to carry my gun everywhere. If you guys are going to kind of federalize owning a gun, then you should be able to go across the country with your, with your pistol, with your, your self-defense. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy. If you're from Michigan and you drive through Illinois, you essentially have to lock all your guns in the, in the trunk and, and, and pray that you don't get pulled over uh, in Illinois. So I think that I'm open to having that discussion. Um, I'm going to bring Rick Ector on here as well to talk about that. I'm open to maybe um, more stringent, you know, background tests. Uh, but you should, we should have reciprocity. You should be able to carry your gun everywhere if you're going to make these national kind of standards. So uh, we're going to come back from the break. We're going to talk more about gun rights. We're going to talk more about this Trump presidency. We're going to talk about the rescue efforts in Puerto Rico. Is he doing enough? And what could be done differently? You're listening to The Wayne Bradley Show on 9, 10 a.m., your Superstation. It's The Wayne Bradley Show. This Friday, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation will broadcast live from the Ford Resource and Engagement Center from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The project is possible because of the Ford Motor Company's commitment to invest $5 million over the next five years in the neighborhoods, which reaffirms Ford's commitment to improving neighborhoods and communities at large for those living and attending in the school area. The Resource Center is housed in the Fisher Magnet Upper Academy School at 15491 Madeline. Street. When you think of the voices of Detroit, there's only one station that comes to mind. 910 AM Superstation. We're the voice of reason. What did Big Sean say? One man. One man. One man. But who would have thought that one person taking a knee could ignite such a firestorm? And then you get this guy, this Trump fella, who is elected on the basis of white power predicated upon white privilege, whose foundation is white supremacy, Donald Trump. You get him, you know, yelling and screaming that, you know, all these players ought to be fired. And, you know, what you really got to look at is what he's really saying is in Trump's mm-hmm. America, America will be a plantation. And we would be uh, slaves, pure and simple. And uh, what he doesn't like is that no one is obeying him like we're slaves. And uh, what he doesn't understand is hashtag resist means resist that crap. We are 910 AM Superstation, the voice of Detroit. Be sure to catch Doing the D with Alexander Zonchek. Right here on 910 AM Superstation. And you know what that means? Lots of cool stuff. If you love gospel and jazz and Motown cruises and holiday festival concerts in Monroe, we've got it all right here for you. I want to say thank you for all you do, all you give us. We, your fans, we just love you. And you wow, know. I appreciate that, Phyllis. Thank you so much. I, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uncomfortable to get compliments to do something that you love doing so much, but I appreciate it. The Voice of Detroit, Sundays from 5 to 7 p.m. A real extraordinarily tragic 50 people dead at least 50 dead and more than 200 in, injured on the las vegas strip in the deadliest mass shooting in u.s history and we just keep going through these incidents where people uh go off their nut for whatever reason and, and, and start firing randomly into the crowd it's the most terrifying situation you can imagine people who had recorded this on their cell phones it was just as you can imagine a panic appears to have been an automatic weapon i don't know that we've seen that before i mean we we've seen semi-automatic weapons that often get characterized mischaracterized in the media as automatic weapons but this was clearly from the clip he was shooting a machine gun or at least a weapon that had been modified to fire like a machine gun yeah and the police are reporting there were multiple weapons 9 10 a.m superstation the voice of detroit If the conversation is hot and the lines are jammed, give us a try at 313-778-7600 or 313-778-7601. That's 313-778-7600 or 313-778-7601. 910 Superstation is off the chisane. 
910 AM Superstation is the voice of Detroit, and we want to hear what you have to say by any means necessary. Mom knows that every mom needs a little rehab. That's fun to say. All this week, you can win a Napa trip for you and your three besties. Relax at the Meritage Resort, indulge at Spa Terra, and get $1,000 spending money. I knew you were looking out for me! You'll also be entered to win $500 daily. Watch for the mom word of the day. Text it to 34490 or go to momweekdays.com to enter. You shave your legs? I'm not an animal. It's the every mom needs a little rehab sweepstakes. Mom at 7 p.m. on WADL Detroit. It's the Word Valley Show. Conservative Lyrical Radio. Giving you what you need to know. This is up. It's the Wayne Bradley Show. It's the Word Valley Show. Conservative Lyrical Radio. Giving you what you need to know. This is up. It's the Wayne Bradley Show. And welcome back to the Wayne Bradley Show here on 910 AM, your superstation. Wake up, Detroit. Thanks for being with me this morning. I uh, got a special announcement here. This Friday, 910 Superstation will broadcast live from the Ford Resource and Engagement Center on Friday between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, this is a project that's possible because of the Ford Motor Company is committed to investing over $5 million over the next five years in, in different neighborhoods, which reaffirms Ford's commitment to improving neighborhoods and community at large for those living attending and school in the area. So uh, the Resource Center is, is housed at the Fisher Magnet Upper Academy School, which is located at 15491 Madeline Street in Detroit. That's 48205. Uh, that school is part of the Detroit Public School Community District. So, again, 9, 10 a.m. will be there throughout the day. Detroit leaders and key, organiza- key organizations will be there. So come out and join 9, 10 a.m., your Superstation Live this Friday. From 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right, so we're back here. Uh, we were talking before the break about, uh, one, we were talking about the whole Rex Tillerson conversation and what was going on in D.C. Uh, I kind of talked a little bit about how Janae Ayers was talking about, you know, legislation about banning hotel rooms and having, you know, act, just a whole bunch of ridiculousness. I've got a good guy calling in from uh, all the way in from NYC this morning. Ty Turner, welcome to the show, sir. What's going on, brother? How you doing? You wake up, man. You sound like you about sleep on the radio, man. Wake up, brother. Oh, I'm trying, man. I gotta be. I gotta admit, this is my first couple days at at five a.m. radio, so I am working on it. I am. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm awake here, uh, but like I said, I, I appreciate people calling in and uh, having this discussion. No problem. With me. So what? So I gotta ask you, Ty. I know you're a good uh, a supporter of our our, our president. What what have you been thinking um, in terms of Puerto Rico? I mean, I guess that's been one of the topics that a lot of people have been talking about lately. What did you think of his visit to Puerto Rico? Did you have any issues with the the now famous paper t- paper towel toss? I I, I think of you know all the what? things in the world to worry about, that's not one of them. So, you know, the thing that bothers me right now is no no matter what Trump does is wrong. You there know, you go. he can you know kill cancer. He can, he can kill cancer. He'll be wrong. You know, he could find a cure for AIDS and still be wrong. Um, the big issue I see is the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. You know, um, people, the media itself makes, you know, their big thing of getting paid is to make sure that they, um, you know, find the story. You know, the story that, you know, gives you the um for. Get you the um, most the most event. advertising kind of dollars give, give, and the most clicks. Yeah. Exactly. And I got to give the president his props, meaning the fact that every national tragedy we've had, Every national event we've had, his, himself and his wife has been there. You know, it's gotten to a point where they call it a photo op. I don't think Donald Trump really cares about anybody else, what they say about him. Right. Or feel like he needs to, you know, even this election, I mean, he's beholden to no one. So n- neither side, no lobbyists, anybody else. So, you know, he's doing his duty as president, you know. And, I, I mean, for you to show up on Puerto Rico, you know, I mean, no presidents normally go to pres- uh, Puerto Rico. Obama went. Uh, even with that, that that situation. But, you know, just to be there, it had already been planned, you know. And so for him to show up even there and then the next day go to Las Vegas, you know, you know, that's leadership to me. You know, some people look at the empathy and some people say that, oh, he didn't cry with the young lady or hold her. I just think he's but, from a different know, generation, Ty. Him, you know, in certain steps, so. I've always said he's from a different generation. Like these guys from that generation, their dads didn't hug and, 
let them have them kind of those kind of feelings as much. And I'd imagine he probably deals with his own family in that way. I mean, I just think that. But this is the thing I look at it too, brother. Before Puerto Rico, no one could say anything negative about the response to any of the situations. But the thing about it is, it was up to the Puerto Rican people. You got to realize Puerto Rico has its own sovereignty, even though it is a territory. Mm-hmm. They elect people in, elect in, in office. We find out later on that the mayor didn't even attend, uh, attend any of the, the meetings, planning meetings. Um, uh, it bothers me that you're an island and you don't have an evacuation plan. Uh, it, 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 it bothers me that, you know, she makes a press conference about, you know, starving, but she's in a, a, a warehouse full of food. Um, right. You know, it just bothers me. It seems like it's just well, a she, 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 well, she definitely wrong, she definitely got these people. She definitely got used by uh, the representative right. out of Illinois. He he made a point of, of telling her to take that uh, take that position, and she made it more about herself than the people of of right. her city. And I think that and because I asked the question, I mean, you have no lights, no power, but yet you can get church made. You mean that that right there was you know that's the big point I kept sticking with. How did you get church made and you have no lights, no power? Right. You know, this is a political, I mean, you honestly look like a billboard and honestly, you know, everyone's been making different memes about her shirt, what it said. But the thing about it is the people are not, they didn't, they're actually, it's so funny that the people of Puerto Rico don't even know what's going on because they have no power. Right. They have no television stations. So they don't know what's going on. We know about what's going on in America, but those people are trying to survive. And the thing about it is you got to realize this president had to deal with three major hurricanes, a, um, a hurricane, a fire, forest fires out west. You know, and so this is the big thing we're saying. I haven't seen anything like this, and therefore, I think he's, the the federal response has been warranted. He's been there; he was there with the governor from the beginning, and people don't know that the governor of Puerto Rico and the, and the federal law enforcement they did their job. You know, so again, these governors, if you look at Texas, gov, the governor of Texas took the lead. Okay, look right. at Florida; the governor of Florida took the lead. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Excuse me, Puerto Rico. We didn't see that. I never knew Puerto Rico's mayor's name before this shirt incident. Right. So the thing about it is, you know, we have to get past this and start to look at it. You know, the media can say, oh, they're starving. This is bad. It is a bad situation. But the thing about it is why the president goes to these places, not for the photo op, is to basically get the ground, go on the he ground. Wants to to he wants to see it for himself. He wants to see exactly what it is for himself. I mean, you got to realize flyovers, you'll see the devastation. And therefore, you know, you'll be able to see that. That's why they go to these, these places. So, again, you know, I like the fact no matter he's going to these places and he's taking his wife right beside him every time. So, again, like I said before, you know, us as Americans, we got to get away from this election. Right. You know, I've seen Hillary Clinton on, you know, on uh, a night show and she's criticizing the president. Why are you she, still She's got to let it you go. Know, like, take a break for yeah, she's, while, she's, you know? and She definitely has to let it go. Election, we're coming up on a year. Yeah. yeah so good. we're coming up on a year, bro. And um, she still, we're still talking about her loss. So again, if if two we start to heal, and, and I think, like I said before, for the, and I don't want to go away from it, but if we look at the Nevada situation that happened, mm-hmm. you know, for me, it did make me wake up. I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a First Amendment person for Second Amendment rights and all of that. But the thing about it is, too, like the bump stock, I agree with that. You know, those certain tools that make weapons so deadly like that mm-hmm. don't need to be out there, you know. And even law enforcement is saying it because they were sitting ducks. They couldn't do anything about it. They have their, you know, they have their pistols, they're 32, 34. So at the end of the day, these individuals are, were sitting ducks to this bump stock, which made a rifle powerful like a machine gun. Right. So these, I agree with that. That's a compromise. And if the left feels like they're going to, you know, any type of gun control, that's not going to happen. That's the bedrock. But the thing about it is, I believe a compromise needs to happen. Well, I, I, that's what they, they, we were talking about universal background checks. And I think that um, I would support even those as long as I have reciprocity and I can carry across the country. I think sure. that to me, I, I'm, 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 will, I'm willing to make some compromises, but it has to be some mm-hmm. give and take. If you're going to make me have to go through a longer process while I'm, filling out right. applications and going through all this, then you know what? When I drive through Illinois coming from Michigan, I don't want to go lock my gun up in a, in a case and and separate the ammunition from the gun, making it pretty much useless anyway. And so I think that uh, those are some of the things that, you know, I'm open for as a gun. I'm not a, what you call these gun, you know, they call some people gun nuts. I'm, uh, You know, I think mm-hmm. guns have a necessary purpose, and I think that, you, right. you know, you right. have to – uh, you know, do it in a way where, again, it makes sense and you're not infringing upon law abiders and citizens to be able to defend themselves. So, And I agree with you, brother. And I just want to ask this, this is a very important point. I talk about universal background check. This mm-hmm. man would have passed. That's you know, my point. It would, it, he, would, it would not have stopped him. He has all the money. He's an insane individual at that time. People kill people, not guns. 
the thing about it is, even if you took it off the street, you know, he could have shot into the crowd and cried with a red inch and shot people and killed people like, you know. But the thing about it is certain tools that you can to limit, like bump stop, making a, a rifle, a machine gun, that can be stopped, you know. But the thing about it is when we start to look at taking away weapons from people, you know, that's the bedrock of this community. And the African-American community, I'm sorry, you know, we used to be, you know, into our guns. You know, we were prior to, you know. Well, ever since liberal, liberal, liberalism has come into the, yeah, the, the fray, they've, made, they've made black people not like guns anymore, you know. Right. Your mama said, you better not come in here with no gun. I bought a gun. Oh, my God. This is the end of the world. The thing about it is you got to realize that's protection for your own home. And down south, we have laws that protect that. You know, if someone comes into your home, you can't just call the police and just run away and just go into a room and lock yourself up. No, you can protect yourself if someone comes in. And the thing about it, if you do it the right way, the problem with our community, Case Point, Chicago, and certain other urban communities, they don't. You know, they you know take to get in, go to Indiana and get these weapons. But look, the toughest gun laws in the nation are in Chicago. Right. Well, that's, so who has the highest murder rate? The, the this ego. is the question we got to start asking within our community, bro. I appreciate it. Well, Ty, man, I appreciate hey, you calling in privilege. and giving this insight, brother. And I appreciate privilege. you listening in. So feel free anytime to call in. Thanks for being up with me this early in the morning, brother. I appreciate it. Hey, man, ain't no problem, man. We're gonna start. We're gonna, we're gonna start running some routes in the morning. Now we're gonna get it together, man. Oh, let me stop saying routes. You know that's Cam Newton, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> you have right, a, brother, be blessed, man. You have to be blessed too, and have a good morning. All right, we got uh, okay now. We've got Jennifer on the line. Jennifer, thank you for calling in today. Good morning. Good morning. I woke up late again. What's going on? Ever since you started your show, See, my natural alarm clock is off. What's going on? Oh, well, we were just. I just had somebody <laughs> calling in. We were just discussing uh, again some of the you know some of these scenarios that uh, yeah that certain folks, even the city councilwoman, was talking about banning. Okay. Uh, you know, hotel, and uh, to me, can I, just, I, sorry, can I interrupt? And I, uh, which city it was it? Was one of the city council women correct? Janae Ayers. Okay, you know it's funny because, and the reason why I overslept, I was at a campaign event last night for uh, one of the Detroit mayoral candidates, who is, uh, I don't know his relationship with uh, with Councilman Ayers. He's more in line with uh, Councilman Sheffield, who I really like. Okay. She's got some great ideas on gun control. Frankly, she did it back, uh, let me think. This was back in May, actually, because I believe May, given it's a Mother's Day month, she had linked up with a lot of moms mm-hmm. in the city of Detroit who, you know, who've lost kids to gun violence. She was way ahead of this issue. You know, nothing against Councilwoman Ayers. I, I just happened to not know her personally, but um, I feel like, and I don't want to, I hate using this terminology. She's jumping the gun a bit. I think okay. we need to take a step back and just slow down. You know, my, my whole thing about crisis communications is sometimes, you know, make a statement and say, you know what, this is important to us as council members, but give us a few days and we're going to come back with some policy recommendations. I feel like nine times out of ten, whenever you throw something at the wall prematurely, sometimes you, it, you risk making the situation worse. I don't, yeah, well, I, these are knee-jerk, knee-jerk reactions every time there's a trap. Yeah, and, you know, my, one of my – I don't. we have to sit down and have a cup of coffee or an adult beverage someday. I have a varied background that somehow led me into politics. But mm-hmm. at one point in my career, I was uh, working for Reuters News in New York and, uh, you know, watching people – my boss at the time was managing crisis communications for journalists, one of whom who was, was shot in the Middle East, unfortunately, and – We didn't have the proper policies in place, and it was unfortunate, but you know what? She managed it brilliantly, Um, you know, getting someone back to, you know, Japan to interpreting, blah, 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 blah. But she made a state. She had someone go and make a statement quickly just saying, look, we are, you know, we're upset for the family, et cetera, et cetera, but give us to the weekend. Clearly, as an organization, we're not handling this properly, and we don't want someone else to be at risk over the weekend in this kind of escalated circumstance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's talk to our CEO. Let's talk to some other news organizations and not make this worse. And you know what? It worked like a charm. So, and I don't, you know, in all fairness, I've been so busy this week. I don't know exactly what she's proposing. I want to print it out. Maybe you can, you know, give me the finer points. But what exactly is she proposing in these hotels 
downtown? And I'm, or well, is it downtown Detroit and the casinos? Are we talking or? You know, I mean, you know, well, in Detroit, you've I got, think, you've I got think everything that was, from the MGM to the Viking Hotel. So what's she proposing? Yeah, I think that that's the bigger issue is that we don't, don't know, know. We don't have all the details yet. But she, okay. the idea that uh, somehow you could have made a law that was going to prevent with, these, with that guy. And that's the problem I have is that the idea that you're going to create oh, a law that's uh, going to. Well, I uh, mean, it's a, pol- a state law, a county law. How about an international law? Because you could throw a gun across the river to Canada. A federal law? I mean, her idea is just to ban right. This is her idea: ban oh, rifles boy. in hotel okay. rooms. Oh, just rifles? Yeah, ban just hotel. Just rifles. Ban right. Well, because again, the tragedy involved oh, a rifle. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, at least they didn't say assault rifle because that's that's again. Well, a what term. about a handgun? What about a knife? What about a bomb? I, yeah. Well, this is this is and why I, I this is why you I'm don't make not, policy the day after a tragedy. That's, I know, and you know what? I, she's got great intentions. I have, and I hope this doesn't come across as a personal attack. I just, I you know, I've never met her personally. I'd love to, frankly, but I just think it. it and did the city get upset again? I was off the grid yesterday dealing with you know a campaign event and you know helping out my aging parents. Who actually, I'd love to give you my dad's view on this as. Because uh, I think you were talking about Trump being from a different generation and how he handled Puerto Rico yesterday. <clears throat> Trump, in some ways, my dad swears up and down. He is 100 percent Democrat. But you know what? I go, Dad, this is not, you know, you're, this is not your father's or your grandfather's Republican Party anymore. He's actually a lot more like Trump in temperament mm-hmm. and in, you know, he really is. I've, he agrees with Trump on nine out of ten issues. But you know what? He was pissed when Hillary didn't win. Right. But, no, my, it, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, there were two things that really resonated with me with your last caller was our generations have changed so quickly with social media and with just, you know, four years ago seems like four decades ago. The world, I feel like, has really changed in the last four years. And then, you know, this, this gun policy, I do think, you know what, it's worth a review of maybe bringing in you know, the Dan Gilbert, Marion Illich, and then, well, unfortunately. Well, you know, the, the irony you know, is guys like Dan Gilbert. Know. Dan Gilbert keeps armed security everywhere around him, so. I know, but. but, but <laughs> I don't see how he's going to step up and say a bomb, that. A knife, like, and then again, well, what's right next to Greektown? You go a mile down the road, and then there's, what was the hotel that got raided by the FBI for the human trafficking ring? They had guns, you know, an arsenal of them, but that's. Define hotel. Define, you know, I'm not, I'm not pro gun. I'm not anti gun. I'm like, I'm always kind of a balanced approach. But I think, yeah, you know, this knee jerk reaction. Fine, make a statement and just say how devastating this is. And you know, we've got a Lions game coming up here on Sunday. Thankfully, and I can't stand Ford Field, but thankfully, everyone's contained in an area. So it's easier to go through the security. But like this talk. hotel thing, you know. Well, you but know what, Jennifer? Night, you know what? I, I, I don't know. I appreciate your your more balanced approach to this. I'm gonna. I gotta get to another call here, but I think that yeah, no I think that your idea of just taking a moment and thinking yeah. about it before you make these kind of you know either proclamations or proposals. I think that uh, all politicians would be better off at least waiting 24, 48, maybe well, even 72 hours. And you know what? Hours. Some of the best politicians, and then I'll let you go. And in my past experience. You know, assisting and managing a severe crisis communication where a journalist was killed in the Middle East. Make a statement. You've got to be out there. Just make a statement saying our hearts are, you know, where our hearts and thoughts and prayers are with this poor family, or in this case, these poor hundreds and thousands of families. And show emotion, and not fake emotion, but I think Trump is very sensitive. I really, really do at the heart of it, just like my father. But, you know, they were born during World War II where, you know, stiff upper lip, don't show any emotion, but on the inside, they're dying. You know. I believe that uh, that could be. I, I believe yeah. that that could be very much part of it. On the inside, you might yeah. be a sensitive so then guy, but make a, you've got to get out in front of it happening. and make a statement. But then say, look, I promise you, we are going to go back and really think about this. You know, or call up our PR department, give us some input. I want to hear your story, but I promise you, we'll be back. You know, in 24 hours or after our next meeting, and we're going to come to you with some proposals, and then let's deal with this. But you have to just say this is important to me, and I'm de- as I am devastated as a you know a father and a citizen and as your president. But we've got to 
let's let's just not let emotion rule the world. There you go. Well, thank you so yep. much, Jennifer, for calling You're in welcome. this morning, and I appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks for listening to the show. You have a good day as well. All right, we've got we've got Al who's been holding for a minute here. Al, thank you for waiting on the line. What up, Wayne? What's going on, man? Hey, What's happening, brother? We met a, hey, we met at the print shop, man. I, I had a good conversation with you at the print shop. Okay. Right before you went to the um, inauguration last year. Oh, so all man, right. You know who this is. Okay. Yeah, How you doing, man. brother? Hey, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you, man. The guy met the people at a golf resort. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, Wayne, you know I know. You, you know you know me. I, when we had that conversation, I get down when it comes in terms of politics. The man met at a golf resort. So the lady talking about, listen, you know and I know. When people going through stuff, you got to you got to touch it. Why, why do black people have funerals, Wayne? To, to, to celebrate the memory of the person that passed away, right? Yeah, and what do normally do black people have when they have home going in service? I don't know what that other lady was talking about. She sounded like a valley girl. What do <laughs> black people have when they have home going in service? You've been to a black service, Wayne. I know you're a Republican, Wayne. Oh, yeah. Well, every home, home most home-going services, you, after you, after that, you eat, you, you, you spend some time with your family. Yeah, but you know how it is in that home-going service. Everybody got to say they sing. They got to say they pee. Everybody's quiet. I've, I've been, I've been to so many times where the pastor has to passing. give you one minute. One minute, folks. Only one yeah, minute. See, that's the thing I'm trying to say. I don't know where that other lady coming from. Donald Trump, why would you be shooting some toilet paper at some people, man? Well, this is the thing. Uh, I think that I think that on, uh, he he got caught up in the German. moment. You know, you know you're a German folk, don't you? Right. You know you're a German folk, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he yeah. said that. Listen, man, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. I, I, I'm glad you're back on nine ten, man. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm, I get to talk to you. No problem. But like I'm gonna tell you, man, I'm not, I'm with you. The lady from um, the city council that was a need jerk reaction. Mm-hmm. We're trying to tell somebody what to do some forces and prayers and saying this guy care. Why would you make a comment and say, these people want us to do everything for them? And that's the reason why I'm going back to the home-going service, because when you do the home-going service, as a family or a family member or a friend, you try to do the best that you can do for your people in their time of need. Am I right, Wayne? Yes, sir. No, you're right so, about that. This guy say, these people want us to do everything for them. My father, listen, my grandmother was born in the Great Depress during the Great Depression. You know what my grandmother used to do for all her friends and people who couldn't bury their people? You know what she was the first thing she would do for people? She would say, what do you need? I've seen my grandmother go out there and pay for people's funerals, man. Right. So I don't know what the Valley Girl just said a couple minutes ago, but I'm going to keep it real because me and, me and you, Wayne, we come from the same kind of background. Yes, you know what I'm talking about, about what our people would do for our family or our friends. Mm-hmm. So when you say these people want us to do everything for them, I'm neither a Democrat nor Republican, so the lady, the Valley Girl who's listening right now ain't got to worry. I ain't a Democrat like that. <laughs> I'm more like the brother Malcolm. I'm just saying, you know, the ballad of the bully. But I will tell you this, Wayne, you remember the conversation we had about education. You talked about your daughter and everything. Right. And the reason why I brought it to the, 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 the home-going service is when a family member or somebody is in need, African-American people 10 times out of 10 will break their neck to do anything for that family. Right. So what that lady was saying right there, I don't know if the guy, I don't know where his heart is at because the scriptures say the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Only God can know that. But I'm going to tell you something. Your actions speak louder than words. Whatever the, whatever you show, you're going to read. And I'm going to tell you something about Donald Trump. Donald Trump was so critical about the past president. Mm-hmm. A lot of that stuff that he talked about, he coming to reap it right now. Now he's got to walk in them shoes. Now he had to do with the other man that you criticized and said wasn't American. You got to do it. Well, I mean, it's all, it's always easy. It's always easy being uh, the the the, yeah, the Monday easy, morning quarterback. Easy to call somebody out when you ain't in the in the position. It's easy to be an arm core church, um, quarterback that most people be on Monday. No question. They ain't, they ain't in the they ain't in the Lions then on Sunday. But like I said again, you know how it goes when somebody in need in the African American community. You got people in the neighborhood to come down. What you need? You need some food. I'm gonna give you some food. Think about it. When somebody lose somebody, what they do, Wayne? Oh, I'm going to bring some food, but I'm going right. to do something. No, that's See, I don't know what white people do, because I, I, I'm not around a lot of white people. I, I'm not trying to degrade you. I, I, I'm around my own people. But I know when somebody lose something or lose a family member, they're right there to help. I remember my friend 
lost his mother. I was there, right there. I came right over. So right. I'm going to leave it at that, way. Well, thank I'm you, brother. You got this show on 910. And I appreciate well, you calling in. I hope you call man. in. I hope you call in more often, brother. I hope you keep on calling in, Wayne. You remember we had that... I remember. No, I definitely remember, man. I was picking up the cars, getting ready to head down to D.C., man. So thank you so much, Al, for calling in, brother. You have a blessed day. Uh, We're going to go to a break here. You listen. We got uh, Dr. Mack. We'll be back from the break with you. Uh, You listen to the Wayne Bradley Show on 9, 10 a.m., your Superstation. It's the Wayne Bradley Show. If the conversation is hot and the lines are jammed, give us a try at 313-778-7600 or 313-778-7601. That's 313-778-7600 or 313-778-7601. 910 Superstation is off the chisane. 910 AM Superstation is the voice of Detroit, and we want to hear what you have to say by any means necessary. This Friday, 910 a.m. Superstation will broadcast live from the Ford Resource and Engagement Center from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The project is possible because of the Ford Motor Company's commitment to invest $5 million over the next five years in the neighborhoods, which reaffirms Ford's commitment to improving neighborhoods and communities at large for those living and attending in the school area. The Resource Center is housed in the Fisher Magnet Upper Academy School at 15491 Madeline Street. We're the hottest station in town. Whatever you need, it's right here on 910 AM Superstation, the most powerful voices in the urban community. 910 AM Superstation gives you the flip side, the real side. This is our side. Three, Three two, one. one. You're listening to 910 AM Superstation, Detroit's only urban talk radio station. We're listening to 910 AM Superstation, Detroit's only urban talk radio station. It's the Wayne Bradley Show, conservative radio, giving you what you need to know. This is the, it's the Wayne Bradley Show. And welcome back to the Wayne Bradley Show. Wake up, Detroit. We're at the 6 o'clock hour. Hope everyone's getting ready for work on their way to work. I'm going to have a good, blessed day. Uh, we still got a caller on the line. I appreciate all the people that have been calling in. Dr. Mack, you're on the line with Wayne Bradley. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, when I hear you talk, man, it's so hard to decide where where to begin, all right? Go ahead. Let's talk about your 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 first topic was that what was it about the president mm-hmm. um and how he's being misaligned in the press was that your first comment i just said i don't think the press is giving them a fair shake in the way they report and they're always looking to you know so so seeds of discourse in the trump administration okay well you know what okay let's 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 deal with some facts wayne okay okay now, in terms of sowing seeds of discourse mm-hmm. the president did refer to people as sons of bitches, all right? He did do Wait a minute, that, but that was right? two all weeks right? ago. Why are we talking about, I'm the talking president. about Puerto Rico and how he's handled this tragedy. Okay. I get no, that. No, wait a minute. No, 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 no. What I'm, see, this is what you classically do. Mm-hmm. I hope you give me enough time as you did that I'm, young lady. I'm going to give you as much time as you need. Go ahead. What, what you classically do is you make an open-ended statement, then when somebody calls you on specific, you said, oh, that's two weeks ago. I don't know what you're talking about. No, your statement was... The, the press, the liberal press, is mm-hmm. always trying to jump the gun on Donald Trump and not give him a fair chance. You made an open-ended statement. And I stand and by that I statement. With, I stand by that. Well, then if you stand by it, let's deal with the specifics of it, like people deal with individual bricks in a wall, all oh, right? Okay. If the individual bricks that make up a wall are weak, then the wall is weak. And my point to you is your statement is weak, because <laughs> Donald Trump did make that statement. All right, impugning not only black men but their mothers. All right, uh, so, and, I that that group, and I didn't agree with and that. And I didn't agree with that, Doctor Mack. I'm not. I'm not defending that statement. So I just want you to let's be clear with that. I didn't. I in no way uh, co-signed that statement. I don't think it was a good thing, and I don't. I didn't stand for that. I didn't stand with that. So go ahead. But go ahead. I'm listening. So in that instance, 
He was not impugned by some left-wing media mafia, was he, Wayne? He was not impugned in that instance, correct? We agree on that? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Now, your statement that, well, you know what, uh, these are knee-jerk reactions. Well, you know, in terms of Ms. Ayers, I'm not going to presuppose that I can put a time minimum on what it takes for someone to think rationally, okay? There was a man by the name of Jack Kevorkian in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. The Michigan legislature operated at warp speed to stop one man. So please do not tell me that because someone acts... So uh, you had to go uh, all the way back to Dr. Jack Kevorkian to prove a point that at some point there's been a a situation where uh, legislation is moving fast. So that's 20, 30 years ago. I'm 41 now. I was a young man at that time. So, again, that's not typically how they move in politics. If you have to go 20 years back, that's not normal to show that that's a knee-jerk reaction. I'm just being honest. You 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 gave me a 20-year, something that happened 20 years ago as an example of how politicians got to move fast. It does not happen like that most of the time. So that's my point. If you can go all the way back to Dr. Jack. What I'm trying to explain to you, young man, if you'll listen. Go ahead. What I'm telling you is, is that because something happens with what you determine is quick, all right, does not make it erroneous. And what I'm telling you is... People Do you think there are any laws that could have prevented what happened? Uh, uh, any laws that could have been done that could have prevented what happened on Monday or Sunday night? Wayne, Wayne I would be happy to educate you on that, but you must let me finish my sentence. You said you would. Go ahead. And so what I'm telling you is, is this. In terms of your, your castigation about people moving quickly, mm-hmm. well, I've seen a member of the Republicans trying to move quickly on the repeal of Obamacare, all right, with no substance to the repeal, Wayne. So what I'm telling you but is have they done it? You are the have they done it? The world have they have they done it? Did they did they rush through a bill and just sign it? No, they didn't. Because Republicans oh, have no, principles. No, wait, wait. They didn't. They tried, they tried with all the might they had. Did, did they really try with all the might they had, or did they just try to you know again put a bill through and knowing that it wasn't going to go through and didn't nothing got done? I mean, it's the no, difference. No, no Wayne. They, they did not know it wasn't going to happen. They were hoping to influence McCain. They weren't. Yeah, they weren't going to. They weren't going to influence Rand Paul. They weren't going to influence Ted Cruz. They weren't going to influence the senator out of Alaska. So again, I, I, the question I ask you: Do they really think it was going to pass? They, they tried very hard to influence her. And what I'm saying is, in terms of your argument about being precipitous, that is exactly what the Republicans did. Now you can try to window dress that all you want. Even John McCain said, "Look." We haven't had any legislative process on this. There's been no congressional process. There you go. Conser- a, a principled Republican stood up and stopped that process. Just like when President Bush tried to privatize Social Security, it was Republicans that stepped up. So, again, I'm not saying that they might not try things, but at the end of the day, pre- Republicans are getting it right by slowing down the process and making sure they get it right the first time around, as opposed to what Democrats did, which was ram no, through no, that no, health care no, bill. No, and, and get it done. Republicans supported that nonsense. It was the Democrats and they scant few Republicans. You see, you you don't the, understand. The, the Obamacare bill didn't have any Republican input or support in it when President Obama did that in 2010. It, it required all of the Democrats and it took them two years. And that's the point I'm pointing out. It took two years, even with all Democrats, to get that done. So it's unrealistic Wait, to think that it was going to get done. And it's, what I'm saying is that was a deliberative process. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. President Obama had a very deliberative process in terms of Affordable Care Act. The Republicans tried to ramrod because they made this ridiculous, nonsensical argument for seven years. Well, repeal and replace, repeal and replace. Mm-hmm. And what they did is, for political gain, played on the ignorance and fear of people. Well, guess what? When the Republicans actually got in power, they realized they cannot follow through on that. And that's why they tried to ramrod this through. So please do not give your party credit for saying we're the deliberative party. You are not. It was the Democrats and a few scant Republicans that put a stop on that. That's the point. Well, no now, Democrats participated. Your, they, they were going to vote no. They're going to vote no on whatever the, the Republicans put out there. I haven't seen a Democrat offer any solutions or be part of this to make it better. So, I mean, it's, that's political well, theater. You know what? That is, that, that is false. And, and which Demo- which Democrat you do you know of that's offered some input to improve the health care bill? Oh, what, what, what? 
Dianne Feinstein. What are you talking about? The Congressional Black Caucus. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? Wayne, I'm asking you what, what specific things have they done to offer improvements to the current health care bill that have actually they've wow. used in this discussion. That's, that's all I'm asking. I'm not saying that during President Obama's time that they might not have tried to do something different. I'm asking now, in this current form, have they come to the table I, discussing stuff with Republicans to improve that bill? Claim no Democrat can get a matter in front of the House of Representatives without the approval of Paul Ryan, all right? And what I'm saying is Ryan has shut down the debate and the discussion. He told McConnell, you get that passed, we're going to sign off on it right away. So please do not ask a, 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 a farcical question about what Democrats have done. Democrats have never been given the voice because they don't control the House. You so mean so the same way that the same way that happened when they wrote the Obamacare bill and Republicans didn't have any input in it? Is that what you're saying? Oh, oh no, 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 no. That that's wrong. It took <laughs> over two years to get that bill. But that's when they did not have the House. Or they didn't have the House or the Senate. It was all led by Democrats at that time, and so Republicans weren't given any, a chance to get is, any input. Is that, that that bill passed without any Republican support? Right. And that's why I'm it's a bad bill. Is, that's why it's a bad bill from the jump. No, no. Oh no! Oh no! The Affordable Health Care Act was. was you should call. We should call it the Unaffordable Health Care Act. That's what you should call it. Well, you know what? Tell that to the 32 million people that are in fact benefited by it. Tell that to the millions of people in the state of Michigan that are on expanded Medicare. Have, have them call up and tell you how terrible it is, Wayne. All right. That that's what you do, sir. If you're if you're so interested in that. Now, on <laughs> on the issue of well, there's no law that could have prevented that. You know what? Tell that to mothers against drunk drivers who have their kids. Man, we all over the place with these different scenarios. I thought we were talking about one. I thought we were talking about the shooting in Las Vegas. I asked, was there any law that could have stopped what happened in Las Vegas? You were the one that opened up with a whole bunch of issues. No, no, you called to let me know. You said you wanted to talk. We started off when I asked you the one question. We went all the way back to Dr. Kevorkian on that one. So I'm saying, like, on on this, just let's just, just keep it today, right now on Las Vegas? Would there have been any law that could have prevented that shooting in Las Vegas for that doctor? Okay, good. And good. And what I'm telling you is that is a classical dodge by Republicans. I'm, no, I'm, I'm asking you just a pure question. You don't even have to go to all this other stuff. Yes or no? Is there a law that could have been created? Would a law have been in what place I'm that could have stopped that tragedy? That, that is a ridiculous misguided statement. Why? Because you don't like the question. It's not as a bad it's not as a bad question. You don't like the question because you know what the answer is. The answer is no. What, what there is no is, law that would have stopped that. And so you don't like the what the, the final is, answer is going to be. Huh? The question the question that you put forth is what could have prevented it? Right. That is not the issue, Wayne, because you could say that about anything. Somebody dies in, a, in, a, in an automobile accident. Well, what could have prevented it? Mm-hmm. Outlawing automobiles? Somebody could die from a drug overdose of aspirin. What could have prevented it? Banning aspirin? That is a misguided dodge. I mean, well, that's the logic that you guys are using on this. I don't understand. Like, you're the one that's, you're admitting it sounds silly on these other scenarios, but in this scenario, no. it, that's, I'm asking you, like, what could we have done? What do you think we could have done? All right, let's just not even put a law into it. What could we have done differently to prevent that tragedy in Las Vegas on, on Sunday night? And once again, it is a misguided dodging statement. How is I'm dodging something when I'm asking you for a solution? I'm asking you for a solution. What is the solution to stopping these mass shootings? Because you ask a question like somebody saying, playing tic-tac-toe and always putting a zero in the middle square, okay? There is no answer to that, Wayne. You ask, it's just like, what is the last digit of pi? There is no answer to it. That is an open-ended question. You don't know if anything could have been done. I don't know. That's not So the why is it so common is, to have these knee-jerk reactions to start calling for gun control when the bodies haven't even got killed? Wait a minute, Wayne. Hold on, Wayne. When you talk about a knee-jerk reaction, mm-hmm. like I said, not, I'm not going to say that the Patriot Act was a knee-jerk reaction. I'm, I'm okay with that. that. You can, right. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, see, that's how consistent I am. I'm willing to say that the Patriot Act could have been a part of a knee-jerk reaction. I don't like giving well, up my constitutional rights because of some terrorist or some idiot. Okay, so I'm, yeah. I'm okay with that. That's being consistent. So yes, that is a knee jerk. That was a knee jerk reaction to nine eleven. I'm okay with that. So no. I'm asking you, or again, because you said you wanted to explain to me, drop this knowledge. What can we do differently? And what what I'm telling you is, 
The first thing we can do is to stop trying to frame the question, who could have, what could we have done to stop this? And what I'm telling you is, if someone is determined to commit a, a crime of mass destruction in the public, mm-hmm. in a free society, there's nothing you can do to absolutely stop it. There's nothing. So okay. that's the answer to the question. There's right. nothing you can do to guarantee those people that their relatives under no circumstances under the earth would have been killed. There is nothing. So the issue is not what could have been done to stop it. Mm-hmm. The issue is what is reasonable and prudent, all right, to eliminate to at least lessen the opportunities for that sort of thing to happen. One is that pump stock, okay? Mm-hmm. One is that pump st- Two is that crank. You, 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 you've seen a crank apparatus where a person turns a wheel and it fires and it, and it, and it squeezes a trigger a lot quicker than a human finger can do it? Right. You've seen that? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. The, the other thing we can do is the assault weapons ban that, that Feinstein had, okay? Okay. And that, that expired thanks to Republicans, by the way. And but but during the time of those bans, when we had the assault weapons ban, it didn't, the violence in those numbers did not change. Uh, there was no drastic difference when we had the ban and when we don't. Okay? So that, Wayne, what I'm trying, there, there you go again. What you're trying to say is, well. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't no, matter. Wait, I'm, wait, being, wait. I'm being very frank about that because, again, I just don't no, see wait, the wait, difference. Wait, listen. listen, this is the fallacy of your argument. Mm-hmm. People are killed on the highways. Therefore, let's not have any speed limits. Let people drive as quick as they want. See, that's the fallacy in your argument, young man. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is, is that in terms of the right to bear arms, that is not the right to bear any kind of arm there is. That's not the right to have a submachine gun. That's not the right to have a bazooka. Well, I need a bazooka to protect my house. That, that's not the right to have a flamethrower, Wayne. Come on, man, stop that nonsense. What this really is about is the NRA and the gun industry playing on the fears and prejudices of a lot of people in this nation. That somehow How, how come it's the NRA that's playing upon these fears and not the gun grabbers that want us to make sure the guns are illegal? Because it seems like to me yeah, they're, playing a part, they're playing a part on people's fears, too, by saying that we need to ban certain guns Universal and get them off the market. Universal background checks is a gun grab, Wayne. Pardon me? All right. All right. Universal background check is a gun grab. No, I, I, listen, I just said, if you were listening, I said, you know what? I'd be willing to do a universal background check. Just listening. Long, so, long as I have reciprocity in all these states. No, no. Universal background checks are a gun grab. Stand alone. Put a period by that, not a comma. Universal background checks are a gun grab, Wayne? Yes or no? No, I just said no. But you know what? It, if that's a compromise to what's going on right now, and I'm saying if you're going to – listen, 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 if I got to do a compromise. universal background check, why? how come my gun is not covered universally in the, st- in the United States of America? If you want to federalize Wayne, that process, why not federalize reciprocity? Wayne, having a background check is not the same as having a license to carry a gun. You do know that, don't you? I understand that. So my point is, once you pass the universal background check, then you should be fine in any state to carry. Wayne, Wayne, if you don't have a wow, you you, you really don't <laughs> I don't believe I don't I don't believe in having a gun. You shouldn't even have a gun board. It's constitutional oh, okay. carry. Well, Wayne, you don't even have to. You shouldn't have to register and do all that. That's again, that's just a way okay, for okay. states to collect okay. fees. It's not about okay, protecting okay, so, me or you. So, that's collecting money and revenue. Okay, Wayne, Wayne. So in other words, a blind person ought to be able to have a gun and take it anywhere they want, right? Can they pass a universal background check and will someone sell a blind person a gun? Let's be let's be nutritious a about blind this. Person, uh, let's okay, be nutritious okay. about this. Would that happen? Because you just like you say you always talk about me trying to throw off something and make an argument that it's not there. Could a blind person walk into a gun store and buy, and buy a gun without any help or any assistance? No, it, Wayne. Wayne, you said people ought to be able to do do this and have freedom. So they should. Like a blind person ought to be able to buy a gun. Right? They should. Right. They, they should. Know, they Wayne. should have. They should have the freedom. As long as they're not infringing upon anyone else's rights or freedoms, why okay. not? Like, how about so, a minor, Wayne. No, how that's minor, again. Wayne? That's again. Well, depending on what a minor that knows how to shoot that has been trained, yeah, I'm okay uh, with that. If they if yeah, they've been trained, a hey, listen, there are twelve year olds that go hunting every hunting season with their fathers. That's okay, almost so, a tradition. So, so they they so already Wayne, know how to use a weapon. I would trust them more than some of these adults. Yes. I have a problem with a twelve year old owning a gun, do you, Wayne? If he's been properly trained, no, I don't. Wayne, Wayne, I'm consistent. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. Again, that's consistency. We're getting, we're getting knowledge here. Blind people with you ought to be able to have guns and carry them around. If, so, if they have someone that's taking somewhere. care of them. 
I, again, I think this is the most. That's the most ridiculous. This is the most ridiculous part of the argument. A blind person. I'll give you twelve year old. If he's been trained, he should be able to keep a, a rifle in his house. But you had to bring a blind person. That's why I said, like, well, then, then no gun laws are going to change. We're arguing about something that you just acknowledge yourself. No gun law is going to change uh, a certain scenario. But let's, let's while we're at it, let's just give a gun to a blind person. Gun law can change if someone wants to kill a group of people. Agree. You cannot guarantee anybody in society that they're not going to be the victim of a tragedy, all right? People did not know 9-11 was going to happen, Wayne, okay? So what I'm saying is if you'd banned all airliners, okay, before 9-11, 9-11 wouldn't have happened. That's unreasonable, okay? That's unreasonable. So the question is now, in terms of the Patriot Act, it is a good thing for us to have access to people's uh, background and see and see where they're at it is a good thing to have for example no fly list those those are good things to have to protect us and my point to you is is that common sense gun registration and regulation is a way to help make us safe that's that so you believe the government more than i do that's that's again that's a trait you must you have way more confidence in the government to keep you safe than i do i just don't i don't believe that you know what, Wayne, Wayne, when you talk about confidence in the government to keep me safe, mm-hmm. I am the government, Wayne. My tax dollars make the government. I elect the people that are in the government. And they I misuse the- your tax dollars. Could you agree to that? Excuse me? Does the government misuse Excuse your me? tax dollars? Misuse my tax dollars? Yes. Do they well, mis- misuse, you misappropriate misuse your tax, tax dollars? Huh? Wayne, I tell you what is a misuse of my tax dollars is for someone like Donald Trump not to reveal his taxes. So How? How does that? See, that's him. what I'm saying. You just jumped to something totally different. How is it a misuse no, well, of your well, tax well, dollars if he won't reveal well, to you well how much money he's made? Well, what does that have to do with your tax dollars? Just brought the subject of misuse of tax dollars. How, what does that have to do with your tax dollars? Him not reporting his, 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 his tax returns. How does that well, in any well, way affect you in your money? Trump not, if Donald Trump is not paying... His fair share of taxes. He paid. He's money. paid more probably in one year than me and you have both paid our whole life in taxes. How do you know, Wayne. Have you seen his taxes? How the, the, the last time that they revealed his taxes, because I'm sure Rachel Maddow, remember when she was pumping that? It was from what, 2008? 38 million dollars. Oh, that's a lie. So, and, what, and, is it and, fake news? Because I'm okay with that. If you want to call it fake news, I'm okay with that. Wayne, what set off? You, all I asked you, you still have not answered to me because you said you wanted these answers. How is it that him Wayne, not reporting his taxes affects you? What, what, I, what I'm telling you is that him not reporting his taxes affects me because him not reporting taxes, I don't know if I'm not carrying the burden for him. He won't let me Word. know. Okay? You think you're carrying the burden for Donald Trump on, on your taxes? Of course. Okay. Of that's, course. That's fair. That is of fair. I am. Listen. I am. I am I am carrying the burden, Wayne, when you want to say cut social service programs in order for tax cuts for the rich. You better believe I'm carrying that burden. And whether you know it or not, my Republican friends, so are you. Uh, listen, all I again, I'm OK with I, I don't have the same confidence in government that you do. And I well, admire well, that well, Wayne, because we're the, you're, you, you're, you are the government. Confidence. I think they they Wayne, use a Wayne. terrible stewards of our money, of our tax dollars. That's how I feel about the government. So if I can't trust them to spend my money right, I can't trust them to keep me safe. I don't have I don't have that confidence. When you want hey listen, listen to this. When you want to get your mail somewhere or a package on time, do you trust the government or do you trust UPS or FedEx? You get it there on time. If you need something there that day. In terms in terms of me getting getting my packages and stuff on time, I would rather have faith in a government and a system where I can take that person out of office, where I can have so, a bureau to complain to, where I've got laws to protect me, then leave it to the private industry who can say, you know what? So you, you, you trust the U.S. Postal Service you trust the U.S. Postal Service more than you trust FedEx to deliver your package on time? Well, it's a matter, it isn't a matter of trusting one more than the other. I do. That's, well, that's what it is when you're spending more money for one service that both offer the same service, but you have one has more confidence yeah, that your you product think? will be delivered on time than you do with the, Wayne, the United States Postal yeah. Service. Wayne, UPS is a business, sir. That, that's a business. A business that can decide to move to, to China if they want to, that, that can go out, go out of The U.S. Postal Service is a, is, a, is a business that's losing money. If they were running yeah, it like Wayne. a business, they would only deliver maybe Monday through Thursday or Wayne, something yeah, like Wayne. that. You know, like I said, that's the difference. When they're running with our government dollar, they're not as they're not as 
cautious about wasting our money. And Wayne County is losing money, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm telling you is the, the goal is to have effective reform to stop losing money. Can the postal system be improved? Of course it can. How do you, how do you stop a government from losing money? You improve the services and stop wasting money first. Those are the, the big problem with government well, is we well, waste money. We waste that's, money. That's part of it. But the other oh, part look, of it is hey, listen, Dr. Mack, raising revenue, Wayne. Dr. Mack. We go, I want. I got. I got like four or five people on the line here. I want. I do want to thank you for calling in and somewhat set me straight. But we're gonna have this discussion again. I do appreciate you calling in today. You have a have a great productive day, sir. Thank you so much. All right. So I got. I've got Marcia on the line. Marcia, sorry for having you wait that long. Welcome to the show. Well, well, you know, I'm retired. Listen, uh, you, uh, uh, you, you, you know, uh, I saw uh, something that came across the timeline. Uh, uh, wait a minute! Did you see uh, the the young the young uh, the man that did the the murder in uh, Vegas? Do you know that he was on antipsychotic drugs? Yeah, I, I did see that, and it sounds like every shooter okay. we've had over the last couple of years has been on some kind of antidepressant or some kind of drug. Well, well, you know, you and your party overturned the, the Obama administration of waiting of, of time period waiting. This uh, for the Czech people, uh, mental health backgrounds. You know, you all overturn that. Well, I think there's a problem. There's an issue with going into people's health, private health care records, and in particular mental health, uh, because it's not always an exact science on that. And I think that that was the problem is people getting put on, just like on the no fly lo- list, you got people that have been put on there erroneously. And I, again, this is, uh, I, I don't know, the, I don't have the silver bullet solution. I'm willing to admit that, unlike some other people that call in and tell me all these other issues. I don't have the solution to how, you, how do you go through uh, dealing with someone who has mental health challenges without violating HIPAA violations, without sharing that information with someone. Because obviously if you're in the mental health care system of some sort, if you're getting receiving you know, aid or receiving certain services, uh, that would be the government would have some kind of record of that. But do they share that in turn with, uh, you know, gun licensing boards? Is that how you would do that? I mean, that to me, that's that now you're getting into a serious HIPAA viol- possible HIPAA violations and revealing people's uh, personal information. So that is a challenge. I mean, I don't you know, this guy, he could have been having personal problems. And he might not have ever had these problems before. Maybe he lost a, he had lost a bunch of money. I don't know. Uh, but how do you, you know, how do you deal with the, the mental health issue? And I think that that's something maybe we need to talk more of yeah. our elected officials about. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, have you heard that, uh, what's this, uh, okay, I, I saw across my timeline, mm-hmm. that on, on this planet, you know, I know I'm on the wrong planet because, uh, you know, I have never even touched a gun. The only guns I ever saw in my life was with my uncle's would go hunting and we would see the rifles. So my mother never had guns in the house. I mm. raised my children with no guns in the house. Ain't it a blessing? I do not believe in guns. Well, yeah. that's a blessing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, a oh, blessing. yeah. Never, I've never touched a gun. I never planned to touch one. That's why I know I'm on the wrong planet. I saw <laughs> something uh, on the timeline. Uh, it, said, <laughs> it said that uh, on this planet, they spend billions of dollars killing, killing each other. Mm-hmm. And then... You spend billions of dollars trying to uh, trying to find life on Mars. You know, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of nuts on this planet. I, I hope people realize that you you you're, you're trying to find life on another planet and destroying life on this planet. I think that was that was a hell of a statement that someone made. Mm. And uh, Warren Buffett, you know about the health care. Warren Buffett has now come uh, to his billionaire census, and he says that it's time for single-payer uh, insurance for us. You know, I'm Bernie Sanders 2020. We're going to get some sanity <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, <laughs> listen, I, 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 know, I know there are people that are – and I'll be honest, Donald Trump has suggested that in the past of single-payer. So I don't know if that's the solution or not. I know there's going to definitely be people that keep pushing for that. And obviously you being a Bernie Sanders supporter, that is – Something he a hundred percent endorses. So, uh, Marcia, let's keep the let's keep our eye on the ball. You never know what could happen in another couple of years in well, terms if, of the health care solutions. Minute, wait a minute. What, wait a minute. Why, if Israel if Israel got single payer and we pay all of their bills, all of the European, uh, uh, Switzerland, Finland, uh, they got single. Well, these payer, places are so much smaller. 
And you know, everyone, they love it. They love it. Don't sit up and speak for the Canadians. So I, we got yeah, the I was about to say, well, Canada's not all, love, when Canada has any uh, real problems, they still come here to get their surgery. That's, I mean, yeah, it's well, great to be able to go to the doctor once a year. That. I don't know. It, not, not, not Canadian friends. Not mine. They, they, they have, have they had any actual love. ailments? You and, know? I mean, because that's. Uh, the, uh, oh, yes. They, 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 they've had. Uh, they, uh, the ask Canadian. You go in there and ask the Canadian. Ask Switzerland. This is the only. This is the only country where people have to go and file bankruptcy for for medical. Right. You understand uh, me? I think, for I think, medical. The, I think that's and, that's a, that's and, a, that's and a tragedy. World do you justify us paying a uh, uh, back in other countries militarily, and they got free health care for their people, and we Americans have to go into a bankruptcy court for if your child get brain cancer, if your your, your your wife get breast cancer. If your twenty two year old daughter got breast cancer, you know this this is a horrible that uh, these type of things happen in this so called free country. Mm-hmm. And now, if Warren Buffett is now saying that we it's time for single payer, I think uh, we well we will we we'll get in uh, twenty twenty uh, uh, Bernie will be in office. We'll <laughs> we'll make some sanity in this country. Thank you, babe. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to a break. I got a couple more callers on the line, Kenny and Tim. We're gonna be back to you guys after the break. I appreciate you waiting. Uh, you're listening to the Wayne Bradley Show on nine ten a.m. Your Superstation. We'll be back. It's the Wayne Bradley Show, conservative political radio, giving you what you need to know. This is the It's the Wayne Bradley Show. Nine ten a.m. Superstation is the voice of the people. Don't believe me? Just listen. I listen all the time. Great radio personality. The new mobile site is incredible. With the visual live feed, this is a whole new level for community broadcasting. I'm also very impressed with the Bible section present both in a written and audio format. Nine ten a.m. has really stepped it up to a whole new level. Tune in, call in, and don't forget to find us on social media. 910 AM Superstation. When you're interested in the current events, we talk about it. Now, one of the things that has happened in our world, sadly and tragically, is there's been another attack in London. Now, obviously, thoughts and prayers lost to people in London who have suffered so much already. But what we we have to recognize, you remember 9-11 was a massive attack, massive loss of life, massive destruction of property. And for years, terrorists were trying to do that. The concern I had earlier was, what happens if they decide to shift towards more individualistic, small scale attacks on a wider scale because speaking in terms of homeland security the more complex and large a terrorist attack plan is the easier it is to infiltrate and stop but when you have one individual or two individuals essentially being inspired by propaganda to take and commit a terrorist act it is much harder to stop especially when it is diffused and dispersed throughout a country and that's what we've been seeing 9 10 a.m superstation the voice of detroit A real, extraordinarily tragic, 50 people dead, at least 50 dead, and more than 200 injured on the Las Vegas Strip in the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. And we just keep going through these incidents where people uh, go off their nut for whatever reason and, and, and start firing randomly into the crowd. It's the most terrifying situation you can imagine. People who had recorded this on their cell phones, it was just, as you can imagine, a panic. It appears to have been an automatic weapon i don't know that we've seen that before i mean we we've seen semi-automatic weapons that often get characterized mischaracterized in the media as automatic weapons but this was clearly from the clip he was shooting a machine gun or at least a weapon that had been modified to fire like a machine gun yeah and the police are reporting there were multiple weapons 9 10 a.m superstation the voice of detroit This Friday, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation will broadcast live from the Ford Resource and Engagement Center from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The project is possible because of the Ford Motor Company's commitment to invest $5 million over the next five years in the neighborhoods, which reaffirms Ford's commitment to improving neighborhoods and communities at large for those living and attending in the school area. The Resource Center is housed in the Fisher Magnet Upper Academy School at 15491 Madeline Street. 
910 AM Superstation is the voice of the people. Don't believe me? Just listen. Great programming. Inspirational. I know there's some good info on 910 AM Superstation. The latest promo for the 4 to 7 slot at the end says, The Goon Squad's on speed dial got me listening to reruns up to the dial. OMG, A-listers on the radio. So when you think of 910 AM Superstation, we want you to tune in, call in, and don't forget to find us on social media. If the conversation is hot and the lines are jammed, give us a try at 313-778-7600 or 313-778-7601. That's 313-778-7600 or 313-778-7601. 910 Superstation is off the chisane. 910 AM Superstation is the voice of Detroit, and we want to hear what you have to say by any means necessary. It's the Wayne Bailey Show, conservative analytical radio, giving you what you need to know. This is up. It's the Wayne Bailey Show. It's the Wayne Bailey Show, conservative analytical radio, giving you what you need to know. This is up. It's the Wayne Bailey Show. And welcome back to the Wayne Bradley Show. Good morning, Detroit. Hope everyone's having a good morning, getting themselves ready for work, heading out, being safe out there on those roads. Uh, we've been having some great conversations. I want to once again thank all the callers that call in, even the guys that called in to set me straight or disagree with me. I, I don't mind that. I don't claim to be right every time, probably most of the time, but I don't claim to be right every time, and I don't mind – uh, in particular, my elders calling in and setting me straight. So thank you for calling in. We're going to go to our next caller that's been waiting. Kenny, you're on the line. Kenny, thanks for calling in. Good morning. Good morning, man. I like what, I like it because we can agree and disagree and still get along. Yes, you know sir. I mean, I like this, this is not, this is not uh, bloods and crips here. You know, I keep telling people that, you know, uh, we can right. disagree yeah. on issues and keep, and, you know, that's what makes America really a, a great place, that we can have these disagreements. Well, well grown-ups, grown-ups, uh, this is just what grown-ups do, uh, can agree and disagree. Yes, I sir. Grown-ups now. Mm-hmm. You know, but my thing is, the only problem I have, I'm not in – uh, saying uh, we need laws for uh, for us guns, but why is it mm-hmm. when we was growing up? Why do we need so many uh, uh, so much power in a gun? When we was growing up, you didn't have AK, AR, fifteen, and stuff. That is for a certain. That is for the army. Why we need that? That's the thing I don't agree with. If you got that in your house, and somebody come and you shoot that gun. And that bullet go travel across the street and might go up in somebody else's house and kill them. Shotguns used to be the thing. Thirty eight, I understand pistols and stuff. I had I had people killed by a uh, 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 a street sweeper. My brother. Okay. And I didn't agree with it. And shot him and killed him. And this was in two thousand and one. Why we need so much? People are so scared. I go out to the Gibraltar Trade Center and see. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to say it's still tight. Uh, uh, a class of people, but the white guys buying them AK. I said, why do you need so much power, man? What are you scared of? If you're scared, you should stay in the house. You you got to buy all these old different guns and so many. But guns. see, I think I, I think that's the part. I think, and that's the part, uh, Kenny. That I think that's different um, culturally. I think that. White men are more uh, are are pure what I would call gun enthusiasts more than a lot of people in our urban communities because we have this negative connotation with guns. These guys that buy those guns that may only shoot them once or twice a year, but they like the gun. They like how it looks. They like how it feels in their arm. They like to go out and just yeah, shoot you, water always, water targets it's, it's, and things it's, of that nature. There's always a consequence when you buy stuff like that. Somebody can break in and get a hole. That's how a lot of these cooks out here get these guns. They don't go to the store and buy them. They either breaking in or somebody. Well, I, I think that's my whole point. That's my whole point about creating these gun laws is that the the criminals aren't going to follow. Man, that gun, that gun law. I mean, people go do. I agree with you on that. That gun law, man. People still go do what they go do. My thing is, why do they have to have all these? You don't even see why they should be in the public in the public square. That's what you're saying. Is like why? If you're a military person, uh, okay, they need. For fight. That's what it used to be for. You know, why we need all these power to shoot so many rounds and stuff. I, I mean, I, can, I, have, I have weapons legal. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? But I don't need no bunch of power and things, man. <laughs> but that's, but see, that's, like to me, that. to me, Kenny, that's more of a personal decision, a personal choice, because you might say, hey, I don't need I that. But that's what's the, that's the problem. There's too many personal decisions that get in this world in the shape that it's in because all of a sudden all these new laws and all this other stuff that they done brought out. Well, you know all saying? right, this is a scenario yeah. I've, I've asked before, Kenny, and I gotta, I'll ask you this and see if I can get – Okay, so you're saying why do we need these fa- these powerful weapons? Why do we need cars that go 180 miles per hour that are on the street in 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 America? We don't. Uh, it's, 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 to my personal thing, we don't. They keep ch- putting these powerful uh, 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 cars out there, and the law keep going higher and higher, which I don't understand. How fast you sh- if you leave early, you'll get there in time. You know, <laughs> all of a sudden, we got to make the, you got to make the. Uh, up to 80 now. It started way well, I, I think, well, that's the problem, I think, that in America and just in general is that people want more. They want more speed. They want more power. It's and, not and, necessarily and, and, a, and, a, a wanting to so kill a person. Uh, when some, a tragedy like this happened, don't cry and talk about we got to get inside somebody's head and see why he did it. He did it because something was wrong with him. There ain't no other th- uh, 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 reason he did it. You ain't go, you, me and you, uh, 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 but they ain't going to go out there and, and shoot up a bunch of people if we and our right mind. Right. It, it was something wrong. They all on the news every day. We got to hear that we try to find out what's wrong with him. He was crazy when he did. Well, you know, at this point, at this point, it's like any other drama on TV. They're trying to, you know, keep this story going, uh, at least from the standpoint yeah. of intrigue, yeah. to get people to watch more TV. Right. Let's, I mean, talk about, let's talk about what's going on where people are losing their houses and all this and still trying to figure out what went on in his head. This man was a millionaire, had big money. A lot of things could have went on. Right. We, we showed all this, on, but that's the news, and we know that's how it go. But my only thing I call to say uh, uh, that I don't think we need the powerful weapons in the hands of these folks and stuff like 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 uh, 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 we whatever happened to regular guns and stuff. You know, people go always be curious about certain stuff, but do it make it right for them to have it? You know, there's a lot of things that I'm curious about, man. You know what I'm, I'm curious about a hand grenade. Do it make it right for me to get one and be in heaven in my neighborhood? You know? No, I, I, I get what you're saying, Kenny. And I, you know what? I appreciate that perspective. And, and I, appreciate you, I appreciate you taking my call and I appreciate your show that you're talking on, man. And like I said, we can agree and disagree and I'm not going to bash no one that, that, you know what I'm saying? It's just that my opinion. Amen. Everybody have one, you know. So thanks again, man, for Thank- taking my call and let some other people get on. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Kenny, for calling in. You have a good day, all right? You're welcome. You too. All thank right. You. We're going to bring in uh, Tim. Tim, thank you for waiting. Thanks for your patience. How are you doing today? Doing doing fine, thank you. Um, I kind of, uh, well, I don't agree with Ken, but, you know, if we were going to add some things to the list, I'd say we get rid of liquor stores and, Pornography and you know all the things that are negative. Casinos, everything, um, every vice, every personal decision that people make. Let's just get rid of it all. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, we have the, to me, that's where right to me that's where it goes. Right to me, that's where right, if you start think. eliminating one thing or the other, well, then there you go. People are going to start eliminating everything that you know. I mean, or they'll attempt to. I think that that's the issue. So you're saying yeah. you should be able to have any kind of any kind of weapon you want, right, Tim? Is that am I kind of understanding that? Like you don't have a problem with uh, going in and buying an AR-15 or AK-47 if that's your if that is your weapon of choice? Who am I to tell you that, that you don't deserve to have that weapon? Is that is that your perspective? That is. That's uh, you know, it's kind of like people that love to go hunting or fishing or. Not to and you know not to be fair, Tim. To be fair, and I'm not, I'm not a hunter uh, myself, but. Most hunters aren't going to go out and go hunting with an AK-47 or AR-15 because uh, it would destroy whatever you're trying to to bring home as a trophy or to eat. It would not. It wouldn't be much left if an AK-47 or AR-15 hits it because those bullets spin and things of that nature. Uh, but I still think that um, you put personal responsibility in the hands of individuals. You don't let the government make those decisions for you. That's just my perspective. I don't trust the government to yeah, keep me safe, so I don't think that they're the all and knowing on what rules need to, you know, what guns should be allowed and what guns shouldn't be. I mean, and, that, and, and if you're going to have these universal background checks, then doggone it, it should be reciprocity. Wow, these lines are 
People calling in. I guess they really disagree with what we're saying here, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't trust the gov- government either. Marcia called up. Yeah, they they, they they have a lot of a lot of folks have a lot more trust in government than it sounds like me or you do, Tim. I don't like I yeah, said. I, uh, I, if I can't trust the government to get my mail to me on time, how am I going to trust them to get everything else to me safely? I well, listen. I I kind of commend them on their mail service. I I don't think I've had many problems in my fifty six years. Um, but with all due respect um, to her regarding single payer, you know, I I love her to death. She's a very respectful caller. She knows a lot, and I respect, I think she's older than me, and I do respect my elders, but, you know, our medical coverage, uh, it, it, it is a money pipeline. It is the biggest scam played on us, and to give this to the government would be the biggest mistake. It needs to be a free, open market. There you go. You know, when you go, when you go into McDonald's and you look at the menu, there should be menus. If you got a broken arm, you got a flu, you should be able to go online and find out find those out costs. Who's competing? Yep. And and let us be responsible for it. You know, when we go to the doctor now with our insurance card, we pay twenty five dollars and we leave. We don't care about anything. Right. And you want to know why health insurance is out of control? And all that money is intermingling with all the swamp scum that Donald <laughs> is trying to break up. Amen. And it is. It is a major. Po- it's the permanent political class that we have to get rid of. And if we go to single payer, we have just straight. Well, at all these different That's places that they compare class. us to don't have the, the volume of people that we have. I mean, maybe in a, in a country where there's only 25, 30 million people, maybe single payer is is, um, you know, possible but yeah, we have over three almost 300 million people in america you, you can't you just i don't see how that model would be effective i mean it yeah. barely works in certain states and it's not working mean, in other countries again yeah. they're taxing people a totally different to make all this stuff work so hey tim before this one last thing before this all occurred Wayne, 90 mm-hmm. percent of us were happy with our health care right and we created this big mess to take care six to eight percent of the population, we could have done it just by say, here's three hundred fifty million dollars. Block grant. Go take care of yourself. <laughs> yep, block grant. Right to you. So, yeah. you know, I, I agree, Tim. Well, I Thank hope you, you continue sir. to call back in and listen to the Wayne Bradley show. I need, I need, uh, I need we'll guys coming it. from the right perspective. So, I, I appreciate you calling in. And uh, feel free every like I said, we're here every day, five to seven a.m. Feel free to listen in and call with your with your obviously enlightened perspective, my friend. Thank you for calling in today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Now I'm going to my guy. We got three calls here. We're going. We've been getting calls this whole time today. I'm really uh, impressed by the folks calling in. We're gonna go to my guy Walter. I already know this is Walter. Welcome to the show again today, my brother. All right, Wayne. Okay, my intro again. One more time. Go ahead. Get used to it. Your favorite. Bible clinging, right winging, arm dinging, gun slinging Negro is back. Bang bang! I said it again. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll put that to rest for now. Now that you know who I am, I tell you what. Okay, let's go right to the guns. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want I want to contradict all and all the callers that call this station and all the other talk show hosts, Mm -hmm. Cliff and the rest of them throughout the day, with this nonsense, (laughs) and they just want to cover up. Cover up with the de- cover up for the Democrats about the guns, right? Or confisc- confiscation of the guns. Let me put it to rest. Go ahead. Second Amendment says the right to bear arms. So you know what that means? Any kind of arms, any kind of gun. <laughs> uh, it, uh, I don't care. Unlimited amounts of guns we should have as citizens. America. That's what? That's what makes me a. That's, a that's medic- America. That's right. With the. Mu- just like the, the Muslims say, uh, they can't fit America. But anyway, uh, that's a different subject there. But <laughs> yeah, man, you're going to get me in trouble over here, Walter. You're going to get me in trouble, man. Okay. Okay, check it out, though. Okay, the right to bear any kind of gun you want. That's right. If you're a legal citizen or a legalized person or, and you are not a criminal, you, you deserve the right. That's a luxury of America. It's a luxury and it's a human right and a God-given right and American right. In our Constitution... It's also a lot of people that call the station are um, 
that don't have sense enough to throw dog urine out of a window, by the way. Um, <laughs> I mean that in love. You know, speak the truth in love. But anyway, it's, it's also to fight with the U.S. military against invading countries. Number two, to fight against the government to try to take over us. God, tell you what, they take your guns from you, they're going to do just like Hitler them did. Just kill the population. Domestic home, t- terrorists, lives, terrorists, and and people who have, have threatened the Constitution, whether they're domestic or foreign, we we are, that's what those guns are for. No question about it. Thank God for you, Wayne. I tell you what, man, we just reinforce each other, man. I tell you, you need like Tim, my buddy Tim. I know he's listening. He just got off with you, a fellow patriot. They can't stand him on this station as much as they can't stand me. I tell you what, because they don't like some of the things I say, but I'm telling the truth. Keep and, calling and in, Walter. You, you know you're always welcome here. This is home, baby. Keep calling in whenever you oh, want man. to, all right? I'll check, I check you out on Sunday, brother. All right. Thanks a lot, Walter. You have a good day. See you, man. <laughs> all right. We've got, we're going to bring uh, Larry on the show. Larry, thanks for calling in. Yes, uh, it's sad that I had to follow uh, such ignorant uh with that Walter character. Oh, you come know, on, Larry. Like, come on, Larry. Oh, no, no, but uh, but seriously, you know, uh, it's, it, it's apples, it, it absolutely amazes me that they even allow you guys to even have a radio station, you know, with the, the utter nonsense that you do daily. Is that so? Station. So, but so wait a minute, wait a minute. You'll listen all day to all these liberals, but then wonder how I get a voice on the station? Sir, sir, you it is it is it is sad. It is sad. But listen, <laughs> I agree about the Second Amendment. Okay. Protections uh, uh, to carry arms. Mm-hmm. I believe that every black person needs to have twenty and thirty weapons. Okay. They need to have assault weapons. All right. They need to have assault weapons. Well, I don't they know what assault weapon is. You mean just a rifle? Right? You mean just a rifle, right? Because there's no such thing as an assault we need weapon. To do. Beg your pardon? I say you must be talking about rifles because I, I, this assault weapon thing, that's just a new term that the media has created. Sir, I, I, I'm saying we need, to, we need to have firepower just like you all have firepower. You all? I'm and black. I'm what are you talking about? I am black, man. What are you talking sir. about? I'm from Detroit. I went to Mumford High School. What do you mean, you all? You could not convince me that you're black. You and that Walter character. I'm as but, black, uh, I'm as, black as they come. Black, Seven but, mile bound, sir, buddy. Everything, come on now. What are you, you talking you about? May have, you, may be, you may be brown, but... You, you, uh, you Come on, Larry. That you now, that you just, just said that down. you didn't like coming on after I mean, someone making ignorant statements. That's got to be the most you, ignorant you statement I've heard yet that. today. I you am. I, last I checked, race. I'm looking in the you mirror. I am black as a... Huh? I'm... Sir, you, ain't no way in the world you black. Oh, my you're goodness, no Larry. I am as black as they come. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for calling in. Oh, that was fun. You guys have really just been fun today. We're going to bring in David on the line. David, thanks for calling in. Uh, thanks, Wayne. Um, I have to disagree with my good buddy, uh, Wayne. I mean, not, I mean, not Wayne, but Walker. Okay. Uh, Wayne. <laughs> uh, and let me say this. Yes, the, the, the Second Amendment states you have a right to bear arms. That's right. Now, that, sec- that word arms is plural with the S on it. As many guns as you want. Under Right. But see, as a government, I can tell you what type of gun weapons you can own. I, I, I would make it a law where you can only own a 9 millimeter and a rifle. That's it. I have not uh, uh, restricted you from buying arms. Those I can't, I can't buy a forty five. I can't buy a four four. I can't have any of those kind of guns, even those kind okay, of handguns. I allow, I allow, I allow those. But those assault rifles, the AR-15s, no. You but those are, them. why do you have to put the word assault on them? Why can't we just say rifles? That's what they are. They're just rifles. Okay, they're rifles, but the AR-15s, those bullets from the AR-15, they penetrate a human body. They do terrible damage internally. So does no, a 357. So does a 44. So can a 22 bullet if you let it if it goes in the wrong place. I mean, the, the, let's be honest. The, the point of guns were to to defend yourself, and so if something happens to someone, I like I said, I, I have plenty of friends that have been shot, and I understand that. But I mean, the damage can be done with any kind of bullet. 
So, I mean, the rationale no, to sure. say is that, you know, well, those bullets do more damage. Well, you're trying to protect yourself. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to just, you know, the way I look at it is if, if you break into my home, if you try to hurt me, someone in my family, then I don't, I'm not looking to do you the least amount of damage. I mean, that's just being, let's be honest. I'm not trying to do the least amount of damage I can do to you. I I, I want you the problem settled. I want the problem taken care of. Okay. You, I, I will allow you to own a 45. What about that 357? What about 357? Can 350, I have my 357? A 357 Magnum? Yes, you can own that. But okay. you cannot own no weapon that can shoot, uh, 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 what, 30 rounds and, and, and automatically? No. Well, no one can do that. That's that against the law allowed. in America. And I, you know what? I'm right. going to bring on Rick Ector. I'm going to I'm going to have to see if I can bring him on tomorrow because we're going to have a good but, conversation about that. But I think but, that I think that that's the also, misinterpretation. But go ahead, let's finish up. We're wrapping up. Go uh, ahead, uh, drop your okay. knowledge, brother. Oh, okay, number one, uh, uh, we have to stay there to defend ourselves against our uh, military, the government. Look, uh, United States Army, uh, they have tanks, aircraft. Uh, things of that nature. The mm-hmm. public doesn't have those things. You could not defend yourself if the United States government wanted to attack the citizens. Or if uh, I, disagree I disagree with that. I disagree with that. That man, no, that, the man that did that assault in Las Vegas, if the government came to raid yes. his home, he could defend himself. Okay, so I mean, I'm not, and I'm not defending him, but I'm saying that I'm saying I mean, that you should have the ability. Because listen, in certain areas. The person that comes into your house might have the AK-47. So why shouldn't you have the ability to protect yourself against someone who might come into your home, who might accost your area, who might violate your rights? Why not? Why not have that equalizer? Wayne, Wayne, if someone breaks in your house, and let's say they break into your house at night while you're sleeping in your house, you hear them coming into your house, you have the advantage. It's dark in your house. I'm, I know he's coming in. He doesn't know where I'm at. So right. if I got my 45 or 9, I'm going to get him. He's, he has to find me. Oh, okay. Listen, I, I think as man. a good shot, as a good shot, your 45 or your 9 will do just fine. But, you know, these guys, if you just start, to me, I think that the firepower issue is, again, an individual uh, responsibility. The same way I might not feel comfortable driving a Porsche at 130 miles an hour. Is the same way someone else might not feel comfortable while having a gun with that kind of firepower behind it. So I get that, uh, but I just don't think that you take you should take that option away from someone. That's that's I guess that's my issue. I don't own any of those weapons myself, and I'm not really itching to buy one per se. But if you know if I had the expendable income and I wanted to blow fifteen sixteen hundred dollars on a on a rifle, that's that to me seems to be my uh, prerogative, and I shouldn't. I don't think the government really has the the right to do that so i gotta i gotta wrap it up here david you only allow one license right driver's license right right but they don't tell you how many cars you can buy you don't tell you how many cars you can buy so that's it's the same principle you know they don't tell you oh you can't have more than you got too many cars telling you how many no that's my point like you can have a driver's license but no one's telling you you know what you shouldn't buy that ferrari because it drives too fast and you can hurt somebody on the road or it's going 180, and you know the the speed limit's only 75 miles an hour. So you know what? The government's going to get in and tell Ferrari and Mercedes Benz that they're no longer going to allow them to to you know build cars and engines that only go to 90. Would you? We wouldn't like that. We would not like that as American consumers or people. So why do we think that's okay with guns? Is I guess is the issue. So, uh, David, I want to thank you. you have, okay. I want to thank you. Look, man, call back tomorrow because we're going to, I'm sure, we'll be debating these issues. And again, as, as more tragedies come, unfortunately, that people will always try to use this as an excuse. But I'm going to reach out to Rick Ector and see if I can bring him on tomorrow and we can have a more of a debate about this because he seems to have what I would consider as a, a true gun rights advocate. He seems to have a, the best understanding, whether it's constitutionally or maybe in some of the solutions. So I'm going to try to bring him on. But, David, I want to thank you for uh, joining me today on today's show. Thank you so much. And I want to thank everyone uh, that has called in today. I mean, we've had calls starting at, what, 530 today? So, I mean, we've the phone has been off the hook. People, you know, like I said, calling in even to argue with me. So I do appreciate that. Uh, thank everyone that we were on every morning from 5 to 7 a.m., 
you want to get the uh, podcast or the replay of this show, just go to conservativebro.com. We'll have that up very shortly. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, follow me at conservativebro on Twitter. Thank you so much again for listening to the Wayne Bradley Show on 9, 10 a.m. We'll see you tomorrow at 5 a.m. Sharp. Have a good day, Detroit. It's the Wayne Bradley Show. This Total Traffic Report is brought to you by Charles H. Wright Museum. On display now at the Wright Museum in Detroit is the exhibit Say It Loud, Art, History, Rebellion, that commemorates the 50th anniversary of the 1967 Detroit Rebellion and illustrates the awe, tragedy, and potential for transformation. This Friday, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation will broadcast live from the Ford Resource and Engagement Center from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The project is possible because of the Ford Motor Company's commitment to invest $5 million over the next five years in the neighborhoods, which reaffirms Ford's commitment to improving neighborhoods and communities at large for those living and attending in the school area. The Resource Center is housed in the Fisher Magnet Upper Academy School at 15491 Street. 